In this video, we are going to compare the performance of the Vector Jacobian product implementation with the JAX Intrinsic versus a naive implementation. We will see a considerable speedup in the case of sparse Jacobians. Let's get started. Hi and welcome to this new video. Similar to the benchmark comparison we did with the Jacobian vector products, here for the vector Jacobian product, I also want to use a vector valued function with a small locality. And the function that we used here could be implemented as something like f of x. And we said that x is going to be a 100 dimensional input vector. And this one is mapped to a 100 dimensional output vector. We call this output vector u and we wanted to have it like a small locality, meaning that if we look for instance at the 50th entry of u, it shall be built with the 50th entry of x cubed minus the 49th entry of x squared minus the 51st entry of x squared as well. And we can realize that by saying this one is equal to x raised to the 3 minus j and p dot roll of x to minus one squared, which gives us the 49th entry, minus j and p dot roll of x plus one squared. And roll is basically rolling over the boundaries, meaning that the last entry in the vector will be reinserted in the beginning and vice versa. Then we can return this here. And if we create an evaluation point to be some random collection of values, and let's also use Jack's random features by saying jacks.random.normal, normally distributed numbers, then provide a random key, Jack's random dot prng key of 42, for instance, and then select 100 numbers. We will get a vector that is 100 dimensional, contains a couple of entries. So here you see it. And if we look at the shape, then this one is 100. And if we apply the function f to it, it will do something with it. So it will return another 100 dimensional vector. And this one is also of the shape 100. So a mapping from 100 dimensional vector space to a 100 dimensional vector space. As we've seen in the video on the Jacobian vector product, we know that the Jacobian of F is sparse. I just want to show that once again by computing the Jacobian using jacks.jack reverse here using reverse mode in order to obtain the full Jacobian on F and then evaluating it at the evaluation point. And if we then import matplotlib.pyplot as plt and use the spy command on the Jacobian and show that we see the sparsity pattern and see that a lot of entries in the Jacobian are zero. It has a certain sparsity pattern, which is banded, including an element in the top right and the bottom left. And computing these zeros is wasted computation. And therefore here we're going to see that VJP implementation of JAX is going to be faster than using the full Jacobian. In order to compare them, let's implement two functions which perform VJPs either in a naive or in a clever way. For this, let me clear the screen with control L and then let's implement first the naive VJP. And to have a fair comparison, we will use the JIT compilation on both functions. So let's use a decorator from JAX and say at JAX.JIT which just in time compiles the subsequent function definition upon the first call. And then let's do define naive VJP. VJP as again stands for vector Jacobian product and a vector Jacobian product takes a primal and that's particularly the point at which the function or the Jacobian is going to be evaluated at. And then it's also going to take a cotangent, which is a term from differentiable geometry. But here we can think of it pragmatically as the vector that is left multiplied to the Jacobian matrix. And it's really important that it's left multiplied because right multiplication, that's the Jacobian vector product, not the vector Jacobian product. Well, what does the naive VJP do? It first computes the full Jacobian, including all the zero entries by using jacks.jack reverse on F and evaluate it at the primals. And then we can obtain the VJP result by saying this is the cotangent.transpose matrix multiplied 
with the full Jacobian. And as seen in the previous video, this .t, at least in JAX or Python, is not relevant, but mathematically it would be the transpose of the vector, because we need to bring it from a column to a row vector. Well, then let's return this VJP result, and that's the naive implementation. Now let's move on with the clever implementation. Again, use jax.jit to have it JIT compiled. And then let's say define clever VJP. Again, has the same signature, takes a primal and a cotangent. So what does it do? It uses the jax.vjp intrinsic. And this one, as we've seen in the intro to it, works differently in comparison to a Jacobian vector product. And you can always think of it in terms of training neural networks. When you want to perform backpropagation, you first do a forward pass through the neural network before you can then obtain the gradient information. And this kind of two-step process is also reflected in the interface to the VJP intrinsic. This VJP, so let me delete it again, returns the evaluated primals. I just want to call this F evaluated. You can also call this primal out and that's just taking the original function and evaluating at the primal. Then it also returns a VJP function which we'll look at in a second and then this is given by calling checks VJP on the function F and evaluating it at the primal. This VJP function now performs our vector Jacobian product. So we can say VJP result comma equals, and I'm doing the comma here because this VJP will return a tuple and it will only have one entry. And that's because F only has one input. And so I can already unpack the tuple by doing so. Then let's use VJP function and call it on the cotangent. And this will then just perform the product for us. Then let's return the VJP result. And here we go. Before we can benchmark these two functions, we have to execute them once because it is a lazy just-in-time compilation, meaning it is only just-in-time compiled when it's also actually called. And in order to do so, we will have to define a left multiplication point. And in order to get that, let's also use a random vector with normally distributed numbers. Again, let's introduce a pseudo random number key, maybe with 43 and use 100 entries. And we can also look at it. It's just another collection of 100 numbers. Well, then let's first call the naive VJP implementation on the evaluation point together with the left multiplication point. And then maybe let's remember the last number. So it's 7.87 and then let's call the clever VJP on the evaluation point together with the left multiplication point. And here we see it's giving us the exactly same result, also up to a later digit after the comma. However, the difference is in the computational side. So let's first do the benchmark on the naive VJP on the evaluation point and left multiplication point. This time it is a macro which executes the function a couple of times and measures their performance. And we are around 40 microseconds. Then let's do the same with the clever VJP on the evaluation point and the left multiplication point. And after some time, we will then see a result. Here we go. It's around four microseconds. And thereby we see that this clever implementation is one order of magnitude faster. And the difference here is interestingly even more prominent than in the Jacobian vector product that we've seen in the video before. But also the theme is here, if we have larger Jacobian matrices or larger sparse Jacobian matrices, these differences will add up. And at a certain point, it might even be infeasible or impossible, intractable to use a naive VJP because storing all the zeros in a sparse Jacobian just takes so much memory and also additional computation to just compute a zero there, which makes it infeasible. And that's the point where you also have to resort to the vector Jacobian product intrinsics. On top of that, you will find VJPs as part of almost any adjoint sensitivity method. And if you cleverly use them there, you can make the gradient computation over a lot of structures in scientific computing and machine learning even more efficient. 
A big thanks to all the patrons of the channel. If you also want to support my vision of free education on these advanced mathematical topics, you will find the link to the Patreon page down in the video description. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, then please leave a like and consider subscribing to the channel. There is more awesome content like that. For instance, an application of these vector Jacobian products on nonlinear systems of equations when we want to obtain sensitivities using adjoint methods and also in other regards and also more on Jax or on Julia. Here you will now see similar video as well as a playlist for this content. I hope to see you in one of the next videos.